The video you're about to watch was first live streamed on Facebook on the 14th of September 2019 in the context of the local body elections in Christchurch, New Zealand. My name's Simon Britton, I'm a candidate for Papa Nui Ward for the Community Board and I've run a series of live stream events just to talk about uh, policies, talk about myself, talk about a few other local issues and I really hope that these are helpful to the community in considering who to vote for and uh, I guess evaluating me as a candidate. Let's take a look. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some significant decisions that have been made this week by our council and our local community board. I'm going to be looking ahead at a couple of interesting things that are coming up, and I'm also aiming to answer some questions uh, that the viewers might want to post um, in the comments on this video as we go along. Kia ora, my name's Simon Britton. I'm a Papua Nui Ward candidate in Christchurch, New Zealand in the 2019 local body elections. And I'm gonna be talking for about the next 15 minutes uh, about those topics. A couple of interesting things that have happened, a couple of things that are coming up, and uh, really keen to hear from people. Uh, if you've got some questions for me, feel free to post them in the comments on this video. Happy to look at those in real time. Or if you're watching this video after the live stream is finished, it will be available through my Facebook page and I'll pop it up on my YouTube channel in a little while as well. Uh, you're welcome to post comments and I will attend to those uh, and respond either in the comments or in a future live video. Just as we're getting started, I've got a second screen, so I'm just going to keep an eye on what's happening with the live stream. Uh, I Just to be aware as well, uh, there is a little bit of a time delay on Facebook Live videos and certainly on my ones I've noticed that I'm talking to you from about 30 seconds in the future so uh, just please be aware of that as well, might not be quite as responsive. Uh, as usual, appreciate a bit of feedback if the uh, video and audio quality is okay, if the lighting's alright, hopefully you can see me okay. I'm just going to slide across to my second screen, bear with me one minute just as we get started and get a couple more audience members as well. And I'm going to share this across to my personal Facebook page. Uh, like I normally do, just uh, to encourage a few other people to tune in and appreciate as well if you're watching this live or if you're watching it afterwards, if you could share it as well, it would be really helpful for me. So just going to hit a share now on my personal Facebook profile that has been shared to my timeline. Awesome. And I will keep an eye out for uh, comments as we go along. So um, what's been happening this week? Let me just find a slide for you to have a look at while I'm talking. So Significant decisions this week, council, community board and a joint, two joint community board meetings have all happened this week and there's been some pretty interesting agendas at all of those. Uh, I've been able to be present uh, at most of those meetings. I was present on the live stream for some of the council meeting, had some other commitments that day, uh, but I was at both joint community board meetings for at least part of the time and also for our Papua New Guinness community boards meeting, uh, which ran just yesterday morning uh, on Friday. So I'll just have a wee run through those and then do the, do the looking ahead and uh, look at taking some questions as well as we go. So um, council meeting, let's start there. Um, council had a pretty full agenda this week. Uh, I've printed out just a couple of pages, just the um, agenda table of contents page from the agenda. Uh, something north of 971 pages in the agenda. Council's really packing it in these last couple of meetings. There's a lot going on uh, as the term comes to an end, a lot of things being wrapped up. And of the 39 items on that agenda, there was just a few of them I wanted to pull out that were especially of interest to the Papua Nui area. Uh, one of them being agenda item 21, which was the Marshlands Road area or Marshlands Mensual Kayanga area speed management plan. Uh, that was something that was consulted on a couple of months back now. I was sharing about that on Think Papua Nui and encouraging people to participate in the consultation that happened. Uh, there was a fairly lengthy conversation around the council table around some specific aspects of that. The short version is, having not seen the minutes yet, there was some modified resolutions put up. Uh, one of the limitations of watching the live stream is that uh, if there's some changes to the resolutions, if council passes something that's different to what's been proposed in the agenda, it's not always easy to track that. However, I am, am aware uh, from what passed, uh, what happened at the meeting and also from uh, comments I've seen since on social media from a couple of elected members. Uh, in general, that speed management plan was passed, which means reduced speed, safer speeds in that area. Uh, second one of direct impact to Papua Nui is the proposed uh, slow speed zone in the kind of in the back of Northlands Mall, really a little bit of Langdon's Road, Sissons Drive, 
uh, Restall Street and also Winston Ave. That area was proposed to be reduced to 30 kilometres an hour. There was strong support for that in the consultation that uh, Council went out and sought some feedback from the community. Uh, it was recommended through by our community board that that be implemented and Council uh, has now approved that. So that will be, uh, you'll see those signs go up in due course. So that will be happening and that's a win I think for safety in that area. Decent part of those parts of the streets, you wouldn't want to try and drive faster than 30 kilometres an hour anyway. High, uh, high uh, pedestrian areas, increasing amounts of traffic and I've written about that in a couple of times uh, in some of the urban design aspects around that area and you can find that on simonbritton.com on my website. Uh, the third one was the Hereward Gardeners Breen's intersection, agenda item 33. Uh, so no doubt viewers will be well aware of the issues that have been raised over many years around concerns about safety at the intersection on Hereward Road where Gardeners and Breen's uh, come in and Councillor Aaron Kewen in particular for the last three years has been campaigning real hard uh, for traffic lights to be implemented at that intersection which is one of a couple of options that came out to consultation earlier this year by Council to the community uh, and some records were set in terms of how many responses Council received, something north of a thousand responses and a very strong wish from the community for traffic lights versus what was proposed uh, by council actually as a preferred option really by council staff uh, and was proposed as a safer option which was a left in left out a median strip restrictions on some of the movements. Uh, so it was a, some conversation uh, on that around the council table just watching back a little bit of the video today re-watching the conversation does seem like uh, there was a slight uh, perhaps misinterpretation of uh, some of the staff report in the safety assessment uh, because the conversation I've heard uh, on the recording of the council meeting uh, is councillors discussing traffic lights being safer than the status quo at that intersection, the current configuration, uh, whereas the material that's in the staff report, let me just see if I can pop that up for you. Uh, this is an extract from the staff report, you can find it in the council's agenda paper. Uh, essentially it's a table that rates uh, the council's preferred option which is the left in left out, uh, one laning the road which uh, is something I'm pretty sure I discussed in a previous video. Uh, signalising the intersection, that's the traffic lights, or the do nothing option. What's interesting in this table is, uh, so there's four options evaluated, not just three, including the do nothing option. Uh, traffic signals, traffic lights, are the one option that rates as being less safe than the current option, uh, current configuration of the intersection. And it seems like that was perhaps slightly confused around the council table. So I'm really hoping that councillors didn't vote for the traffic signals thinking they were improving safety at that intersection. However, council staff were also quite clear in their presentation to councillors the way they've really put that is that traffic lights aren't dangerous, uh, they're just not the safest option. Uh, and posting on Think Papanui uh, about what's happened uh, subsequent to that decision. Uh, again, I've had you know, 60 people thumbs up the news that there will be uh, traffic lights coming uh, and one sad response. Connie, appreciate your comments as well on that and very nice to meet you yesterday, by the way. Uh, so clearly still very strong views and support in that community. Uh, next big question on that one is where's the money going to come from to do it? Because again, what council was... Uh, in the consultation process, uh, council staff were aiming to be very clear both on the relative merits in terms of safety of the different options, uh, but also the relative implementability of those options given that there is not money even in the 10 year long term plan uh, to pick up the tab for traffic lights. So council's resolutions uh, on Thursday for that were uh, to support the traffic light option uh, noting the response from the community and the desire for that from the community and also to ask staff to go away and essentially have a look at ways that might be able to be funded uh, in time to perhaps put something into next year's annual planning process. So more news on that uh, I guess when it happens. Uh, so that's the couple of bits I wanted to pick up on council news. Uh, what's next on the list? Community boards uh, yeah, I'll do it in that order, that's cool. So community board meeting, uh, our community board met on Friday morning, uh, just yesterday morning. Uh, again, there was a decent chunk of um, agenda. Here's the agenda page uh, from our community boards, uh, the contents page from our community boards agenda. 
And just wanted to touch on a couple of quick things there. Uh, one of the things on the list was the 10 Shirley Road, Shirley Community Reserve pump track uh, location, uh, which has uh, been a topic of great interest to residents over the Shirley Way, which is outside Papua Nui Ward, but it's something that the Papua Nui Innes Community Board, of course, has the decision making or the recommendation making uh, power for. Pretty sure on this one, stop me if I'm wrong, please feel free to comment. This was one where the community board had the authority to decide this as opposed to recommend it through to council. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a decision under delegation on the contents. Uh, so what had been proposed, uh, there was a couple of options, but essentially the short version on that one is that uh, there was a approval for that from our community board, so that will be going ahead. The Shirley Reserve, just across the street from Shirley Primary School, will be getting that temporary pump track. Uh, it's temporary in the sense that it's not permanent, uh, but it should be there for a decent period of time. Sounds like implementation might happen before Christmas if all the stars line up. I know uh, I heard in the meeting that Council have a project manager appointed to implement that. Essentially it's just a question of uh, ordering the hardware, uh, getting a contractor lined up and getting that project through the process. So the hope is that it will be implemented in time for the Christmas holidays. So yeah, good news and a win for the community there. Uh, the other one I did just want to touch on was summer with your neighbours. Uh, every year uh, there's a thing which used to be called Neighbourhood Week. These days it's called Summer with Your Neighbours. Uh, and it's not a week, it's, it's really the whole summer period. And that's an opportunity for members of the public to apply to our community board uh, and in other areas, other communities board support this as well for a small amount of funding to support neighbourly get-togethers in their local area. Uh, our community board had a total of $4,000 to allocate through that. Uh, they fully allocated that to 40-ish applications uh, on Friday morning. Uh, and as I uh, saw Mike Davidson commenting on his Facebook page, that's something I really, really support as well. Just, you know, it's, it's a, in this great scheme of things, I want to say it's a trivial amount of money uh, for the community board and for council to be putting into, into community, but it's a, you know, it forms a very big lever and an enabler to uh, enable those events to happen and to encourage people to participate and to think about getting together. Uh, and yeah, one of my big things is community connectedness and here's a really simple way uh, for a very small price tag that our community board can support that. So kia ora, well done, thank you to the community board for uh, supporting that and uh, not falling into the trap of deciding you can't afford sausage sizzles because we need to cut $100 million from the budget like a certain mayoral candidate would uh, like us to do. What was the other thing on my list there, things that have happened this week, so joint community boards. So. Uh, there's been a joint meeting, and in fact two joint meetings this week, of our community boards. Uh, that was Papua Nui Innes and Lindwood Central Heathcote. Uh, those community boards met in the council chambers on Monday to hear submissions on the council's proposed traffic projects downstream of the Christchurch Northern Corridor. Uh, and also to consider a staff recommendation that the boards recommend through to council to implement what has been proposed. And what was proposed was a modification on uh, what had been consulted on. Uh, many of you might have seen this document, uh, or probably multiple versions of it by now, because uh, it's been through a couple of consultation loops. Uh, so this is all the proposed projects downstream of the Christchurch Northern Corridor and a certain amount of those projects uh, there's a, effectively a compliance requirement on council to do some stuff to uh, stop rat running basically to keep traffic on main roads when traffic increases due to the opening of the Northern Corridor motorway which is expected mid next year. Uh, there's projects in there as well that are additional projects that the council is uh, intending to do to essentially help the community uh, deal with the impacts of, uh, of the increased traffic. Uh, the sense from the community and from a number of individual submitters and organisations like St Albans Residents Association has been that the council has perhaps been a bit too focused on how to move cars through the neighbourhood and not focused enough on how to more effectively support the community and perhaps move people rather than focus on cars. Uh, so it was quite interesting to uh, just have a listen to the submissions on Monday. Uh, all the submissions were heard on Monday, but uh, they only left about an hour for the two community boards, which I want to say are 6 plus 9 is 15 uh, members, if they're all present, to discuss, 
to consider uh, and you know, consider this amount of detail, uh, whether to adopt it as a whole, whether to toss it out, or whether to do something in between. So the board's reconvened on Friday at midday in the Papanui boardroom, and I was able to have sat in on that meeting as well and really talk through uh, what the boards might recommend to council because this is one where the community boards themselves have uh, make a recommendation uh, and then it's the council that makes the final decisions because of the um, impact I guess of, of the decisions that are being made. Uh, and yeah, really interesting just to hear some really good thought. Uh, there was some interesting language used around the table. Uh, the Northern Corridor and the overall project was variously described as uh, what did we have? We had a lemon, we had a sour's ear, we had a, oh I forget the other ones, there was a couple of other terms used as well, with the greatest of respect to the people involved in delivering that project. Uh, clearly not everybody's a fan uh, that it's happening in the first place. However it is happening, uh, so this is the community boards trying to really figure out how to get the maximum win for the impacted communities downstream. Uh, what was really interesting in the outcome of that was, I think, quite a strategic and quite a significant uh, recommendation, uh, which is essentially all the traffic calming works and a whole bunch of other works uh, that you'll find really nicely detailed, uh, not just in this document, uh, but if you want the shorter version, if you jump across to Emma Norrish's Facebook page, uh, you will find a really nice summary. So that's Emma Norrish, Waipapa Papa Nui Community Board member is the name of the Facebook page. If you look on there you'll find a post from this morning from Emma uh, just bullet pointing all the changes uh, that the boards have recommended. Uh, one of the things that was proposed uh, was widening of Cranford Street between Innes Road down to Berwick Street, Berwick Street and clearways in that section so that in peak hours there could be two lanes heading south in the mornings into the city in the afternoons there could be two lanes of general traffic heading north out of the city towards the northern corridor uh, so the what the boards have recommended to council is that the uh, adjustments to the road be, ma be made so that there's a slightly wider corridor uh, to play with but the boards have not made the recommendation around the clearways uh, and there's some language uh, in the resolutions that were passed uh, around pushing again for travel demand management measures, TDM, travel demand management, uh, and the boards are still asking council staff to look really, really hard at what can be implemented in time for the motorway opening around, is it bus priority, is it high occupancy vehicle lanes, is it, what was the other one? There was another one as well. Uh, forgive me, I am talking live here and unscripted, and uh, I will be writing a wee article about the outcome of that meeting. I'll be posting that on simonbritton.com, so uh, I'll track a bit more detail up there as well. Let me have a quick scan of uh, Emma's post. Public transport lanes, high occupancy vehicle lanes, uh, express bus services, etc, etc. Yep. Cool. Thank you, Emma, for providing that information as well. So. That's the um, joint community boards. I think that was a really positive uh, approach for the two boards to take as it was a really constructive meeting, really respectful meeting, uh, or t two meetings. And the sense I'm getting just talking to people afterwards, uh, other people who, uh, members of the public who were there, uh, and just what I'm seeing on social media since the close of that meeting, sense I'm getting from the community is that the ground that the community boards have found there and their recommendations seems to be um, about what we could hope for the boards to have found. So yeah, well done to the boards on that. Uh, again, um, do appreciate you liking this video, sharing it on your Facebook pages and throwing me a comment or a question uh, either as we go along. I'm about to have a quick look and just see what's there. Um, hi Don, nice to hear from you. Um, feel free to ask me a question. Uh, anyone else who's watching, feel free to chuck a question on there as well, and I will come back and have a look at that shortly. Uh, so looking ahead, a couple of interesting things that are happening this week. Uh, one of them is a Meet the Candidates evening on Tuesday night. That's Tuesday the 17th of September at the Christchurch Function Centre, which is at the Redwood Hotel. I'm kind of pointing over my shoulder. It's <laughs> just down the road from me uh, here in Redwood, uh, the corner of Preston's Road and Main North Road. Uh, it's a Facebook event I have shared on Think Papanui for that. I, I've clicked going on it on my personal Facebook profile, so I'm sure you can find that fairly easily. It's the Redwood Business and Residence Group that is hosting that. 
And present at that meeting will be our Papa Nui Ward Council candidates and Community Board candidates. So that is, of course, me, uh, as well as our other candidates that are either seeking election or re-election. And there'll be an opportunity to uh, hear a wee pitch from all of us. There'll be uh, questions from the floor, so welcome to come along with your questions. And there'll be an opportunity just to meet and informally discuss afterwards. Perhaps you've got a question but you don't want to ask it publicly or you just want to come along and size everybody up. That's absolutely fine too. So yeah, I really, really appreciate that. Last election in 2016, uh, there was very limited opportunities to do the um, meet the candidates thing uh, publicly in a public meeting like that. So I really appreciate the Redwood Business Residence Group, which is something I've been part of for the last little while, uh, taking the initiative to host that meeting. Uh, later in the month, the 30th of September, St Albans Residents Association are also hosting Meet the Candidates evening. That's going to pick up a number of other candidates from uh, other wards or that are seeking election to other roles. I'm pretty sure they're picking up ECAN candidates as well at that. Not sure about the DHB. Someone might like to comment and let me know. Uh, so that'll be a bit of a bigger thing. That's at Bailey's Bar, Edgware Road, Colombo Street uh, on the 30th of September. So do feel free to put that in your diary as well. But yeah, if you can come along this Tuesday night, I'd really look forward to meeting you and having conversation there. Um, Voting papers. Yeah, voting papers are coming out this Friday, the 20th of September. Uh, so it feels like it's been a really long time coming. I announced my candidacy much earlier in the year. So it's been a real uh, long build up to this point. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that happening. If you're on the electoral roll, uh, then you'll receive your voting papers in the post from this Friday. Uh, and they're likely to be delivered through till I think from Friday the 20th through till about the 25th of September. If you haven't received them by then, you might want to holler, uh, get hold of the electoral officer perhaps, but don't stress if they don't turn up on Friday. They're delivered through the post through our normal service, which now is uh, three times a week, not every day. So things sometimes take a little bit longer to move through that. Uh, you will get voting papers for... Uh, all the city council uh, elected positions, so that's you'll be able to vote for mayor for your local councillor and you'll get two votes for your local community board members. You also will be voting or have the opportunity to vote for the district health board and our regional council ECAN. All that information will be there, there'll be a voting paper for everything, uh, papers and an information booklet telling you all about that. So do watch out for that. Uh, it's pretty exciting that we're finally getting to that point. Um, again, uh, welcome to ask me some questions uh, at the stage or even afterwards if you're watching this after the fact. Happy to take questions later as well and I will respond to those either in the comments or I will um, respond to some questions uh, in a future live video. Um, another thing that's coming up is um, tomorrow there's another Coffee with a Candidate session. So that's something I've been running just as an informal way to get around the community and consume cups of coffee uh, at candidates from uh, at um, cafes from Redwood Coffee Culture. Uh, I've been to Joe's Garage Cafe Mint down on Wairaki Road which is really getting into Brindwa but it's still Papa Nui Ward. Been to Station One and Black and White Coffee Cartel. I've been to Hustle Cafe, which is the new name for the cafe at 102 Sawyer's Arms Road, just by the railway line. Uh, I'm back at Coffee Culture Redwood tomorrow afternoon at 3.30. I'll be there for about an hour. I'll be having a cup of coffee and uh, maybe doing a bit of prep work on my campaign or perhaps just reading the paper. Uh, so feel free to come along and say hi. As I've said before, I'm really keen to keep those events accessible. So. Uh, I'm happy to shout the cup of coffee. I'll shout your hot drink of your choice if you come along and join me there uh, if you're one of the first people to turn up. Um, meet the candidates on the 17th of September. Future opportunities to connect with me will be posted uh, either on my Facebook page if there are events that I'm organising like the Facebook Live events that we're on now or Coffee with a Candidate events. Um, we're just about in the wind-up now with uh, voting papers coming out at the end of the week, but I'm keen just to keep ticking along with a few more events through this period, heading towards the 12th of October, when, which is our official polling day and when the votes get counted. Uh, so I'll be updating uh, my Facebook page with a couple of extra events, and you can also find those on my website, simonbritton.com slash connect. Uh, put all my events there, including the public Meet the Candidate ones as well. Uh, and you're welcome to contact me again either through this Facebook page, you can contact me through my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, this video will be going up there in the fullness of time. 
uh, or again jump on my website simonbritton.com slash contact and all my details are there as well. Thanks very much for watching tonight, appreciate that I've had a few people online and uh, as seems to be usually the case there'll be a bunch more views that happen afterwards so thanks for watching this uh, whether it's live or not. Uh, Again, just noticing the time delay, had a bit of feedback that uh, sometimes people have found my videos cut off abruptly, so I'm going to run a longer end screen on this one. Hopefully that won't happen this time. Appreciate the connection, uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about a few of these things. If it raises any questions with you, do feel free to ask me a question afterwards in any of those ways. Kia ora.